Okay, so with everything assembled and in the airplane now, we're going to do our first power-up checks before we button everything up or assume that you'd be at the point where you're buttoning everything up. So what's going to happen is first I'm going to turn on the master switch and I would expect that the boost, uh, boost pumps, the left one's going to turn on and the, actually both are going to turn on. The left one will turn off, then the right one will turn off. That's part of its self-check. When these pumps are dry, they're going to be very loud and sound like machine guns. Um, after they get some fuel through them and they prime, they're going to quiet down to the point where it's not going to be any louder. In fact, it'll probably be quieter than the factory boost pump, if you know what that sounds like. So let's do that now. Okay, so I don't know if that translated well on video, but both pumps were on. Then it got a little quieter because the left one turned off. Then it got quiet when the right one turned off. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to move the selector to the right position. And I'm going to turn on one of my fuel pump switches, and we're going to listen for that pump to turn on. And it did. Now I'm going to do the other fuel pump switch. And it did. I'm going to come back to my left pump now. Okay, so we know that the switch detection is working. We know that the fuel selector position sensing is working. And then if we go to off, none of the pumps turn on. So. We're good to go with this. I'll put this out of the way for now. The last thing we're going to test is our boost pump override switch. When I turn this on, regardless of any settings elsewhere, I expect that both boost pumps are going to turn on. And they do. Now, with all those checks completed, you can button everything up and be confident uh, that everything's going to be working properly. Let's look at the G3X now and get those settings squared away. First, we're going to get the absolute fuel pressure sensor uh, set up. Now, one thing of note is that the sensor, the values that they had set on it are in inches of mercury from 5 to 50 inches. We're going to be looking at them in PSI, so some of these numbers are going to seem a little weird, but it's just because of how the conversions work. So we're going to go to our miscellaneous pressure line over here that's uh, not used. We're going to open up a custom miscellaneous pressure sensor. I'm going to set the gauge name to fuel, I'll just do ABS for absolute. And then I actually would like to set the EIS display to text only because it gives me the full label and I don't really care about the bar graph, I just care about the number. Now we're going to go over to calibrate and for the first point the calibrated pressure is going to be 2.46 PSI which is going to round it to 5 and the input voltage is going to be 0 0.22 store. Next we're going to do 24.56 PSI again it rounds it input voltage 4.03 store. Now we've got a nice linear line there we'll hit save and then we don't have the sensor hooked up right now so it's just dashes. On the display range I'm going to do 3 because you'll probably never be there. And the maximum I'm going to do is, uh, we'll do 20, because you're not ever going to be that high either. Uh, we'll save that, and that is your pressure sensor done. Now, let's do the discretes. In this particular aircraft, I used discrete 1 and discrete 2 of the GAD 27. So for discrete 1, we're going to set that to an active low. It's going to be user-defined input. The alert is going to be red. The alert label FPCM fault. This discrete turns on whenever the fuel pump control module self-monitoring systems detects a fault either with the pumps or with the fuel selector. We'll save. Discrete 2. Active low again. User-defined red. The label is going to be check fuel. Save. That discrete is going to turn on when the system's running. If the fuel pressure drops and the control module detects that, it's going to automatically turn on the other Rotex fuel pump that you're not running on. When that happens, this check fuel light is going to illuminate and it's going to give you a message in the cast area and that is going to be your indication that that happened. So it's going to give you time to turn on that other switch manually, 
maybe do some of your own troubleshooting to see what's going on. Um, you know, for example, if a Rotax pump failed, that would come on. Uh, if you had, um, if you ran out of gas in one tank by accident and you needed to switch over but forgot to, uh, that would come on because obviously that would be a cause to lose fuel pressure. So that is a dummy light to say, hey, something's going on. So to touch again on the first discrete that I had set up, which was FPCM fault, the fuel pump control module, FPCM, has self-monitoring capabilities in it. It's always looking to see, are pumps turning on when they should be, or are they turning off when they should be? And it can, it can detect if things aren't happening the way that they're supposed to. Um, it looks at the inputs from the fuel selector, or fuel selector position sensor, to know if there are multiple inputs at once, or if something doesn't seem right, it will detect that, it'll alert you. So that light is actually very important. And also, when that light comes on, through the Wi-Fi interface, uh, which is described in more detail in the manual, um, it, you, there's an errors page that will tell you exactly why that fault light is on.